My next guest is the surprise appointment of Rishi Sunak's first cabinet reshuffle. A controversial Conservative convert from Nottingham once voted as the worst man in Britain. I do not endorse that. That was by a left-wing newspaper. As the MP for Ashfield, Lee Anderson, has been in Parliament since 2019, he's already a firm favourite amongst the Tory grassroots. So as Conservative support in the red wall seats bleeds away, will he be the standard bearer for the party's fight back? Lee joins us now. Hi, Lee. Hello, Nadine. Lee, we had a bit of a little, little titchy bounce in the polls this week, and it's been attributed to you and your appointment. And does that show you that you are speaking to those red wall voters that we need to support us? Uh, I'm not sure it can be attributed to, to me, Nadine, to be honest, but uh, I would imagine that to red wall voters, first time Conservative voters have always traditionally voted Labour in the past. Maybe it was a little bit of good news for those voters, you know, people like my parents and my family and my friends and lots of neighbours in Ashfield. So I can see where you're coming from a little bit, but don't accredit all the 3% to me. I think we've steadied the ship up quite a bit over the past few weeks. Well, it's my show, Lee, so I will. <laughs> so, I'll take the Lee, 3% then, Nadine. You have said, you suggested that some Tory <laughs> MPs find you a little bit divisive. I've never heard anyone ever say that. Why do you say that? Well, I, I, I'm not sure whether, whether I've said that directly. I, I mean, if you're a politician, Nadine, you know this. Uh, we're all divisive in some way. You're divisive, I'm divisive. If we're not divisive, then we're not doing our jobs properly. There will always be people across the country of different political colours that will not like us or like what we have to say. And even in our own party, there will be some people that actually disagree with our points of view. But the, the, the thing I have noticed about the Conservative Party, and remember, I've only been in the party four years, is that we can argue, you know, cat and dog behind closed doors. But when it comes to the crunch, we can all pull together and unite, which is something that I never actually saw in the Labour Party. They were so divisive in, in the time I was there. But, you know, the good news is the Conservative Party, on the whole, uh, we're coming together when, when the country really needs us. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Lee, some of your policies that you support really speak to people in those red wall constituencies. So do you think that we're too soft, the Conservative Party is too soft on crime? Because I know you said that you would support the death penalty. Do you think we're too soft on crime in general? Well, I mean, last year we brought new laws in. You was there, Nadine, you know, to, uh, to increase sentencing for the most violent criminals in this country. That, that for me, is red meat. I know you're going to harp on about the, the death penalty comments. This is not some, a, a big surprise to my constituents. You know, it's, it's, I've not all of a sudden come out and said I'd support the death penalty. This is an opinion I've always held from, from being a teenager. Uh, but you know what? It's not some lunatic fringe view. This is not. This is, you know, it's supported by 52% of, of the country. And millions of Conservative voters actually support this policy. Look, I know and you know, Nadine, this is never going to happen. It's never going to be government policy. It will never get through Parliament. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a human being. I'm a citizen. I'm a member of Parliament. I am allowed to have opinions, even if, you know, some people in my own party in Parliament don't agree with them. It's as simple as that. It's a democracy. And do you know what, Lee? I think that by holding that opinion and standing by that opinion, what you've demonstrated is that people know exactly that you speak truth, you speak the truth of your own opinions. People know exactly where they stand with you. They know exactly who Lee Anderson is. They know exactly what Lee Anderson stands for. And when your constituents go out and vote for you, they're not voting for some party spiel that gets put in a leaflet that's produced in Westminster by a central office. They're voting for Lee Anderson and what they believe in, they know Lee Anderson believes in. And that is so refreshing in today's political world. And, you know, it's, all, it's always going to work for you. I'm going to go over to Rachel Johnson and oh. John Sargent are with me. So I'm going to go over to Rachel and John to, to see if they have some questions for you, Lee, because we could gas all night. Okay. Rachel. Where is Lee? Lee, um, Twitter is obsessed with your orange headboard. Where did you get it? <laughs> I've never seen that. The orange never... headboard? <laughs> haven't you got an orange uh, headboard? Uh, no, it's... Uh... What is it? No, I haven't got the orange headboard. Okay. And you will, ne you will never see an orange headboard. All right. <laughs> so, um, I, know got... the, I know the tweet you're talking about. OK. I've got two quick questions for Lee. Um, the first one is, yeah. you've already crossed the floor once. 
I think a Labour victory is nailed on in 18 months' time. Do you feel like you're a rat that's jumped on a, sh a sinking ship? Ooh. No, I don't feel like a rat. Uh, I don't feel like I've jump, jumped on a sinking ship. Look, you know, I, I have a, I'm in a privileged position. I sit there on the green benches on the same side as Nadine. And what, what the members of the public do not see when we sat there is the opposition. And I look at the SNPs, I look at the Labour Party and, and the few Lib Dems in there, and they scare me to death. And I think to myself, my goodness, you know, in 18 months time, there could be another 100 uh, of that lot sat there running our country. Well, they'd be on the other side, obviously. And that terrifies me. The, the, the talent pool within the Labour Party, you know, the front bench and the parliamentary part, is awful. I look at these people and I think, my goodness, who can these people actually have in government? Yes, we've had a tough time in the past three years since I was there. Yes, we've had a tough time with COVID, now the, the war in Ukraine and, and the cost of living. But you know what? I'd sooner have my colleagues on the front bench running this country. I feel a lot safer. I can sleep at night knowing that they're running the country, not the, not the, uh, the people I see opposite. They absolutely terrify me. And as a housewife myself, I've got to ask you very quickly, if you had 30p, Lee, um, how would you provide a meal out of 30p? She's never well, lived, not, Lee. She's including, never lived. Including <laughs> electricity or gas. So I keep, I keep, it, I keep, yeah, I keep her in this 30p, Lee. I mean, a, a, a cook, a local chef, told me he could f feed a family of five for 50 quid. He, he was somebody I worked with at a local food bank. Or 50p. I so. 50 quid, a family a five for a week. 50 quid. So I challenged him and we did a, a ready, steady cook, got four MPs there, film crew. We got 50 quid's worth of uh, groceries from the local Aldi and he made 172 meals with us for, for 50 quid. It worked out at 30 pence each. That's where the 30p came from for batch cooking. I then invited every single Labour MP to come to my food bank to take part in this project and they all refused. But what they didn't refuse to do is slate me in the media. Of this. All I was trying to do is help people budget and cook. What's wrong with that? Nothing, but I asked you how you would make a meal for 30p, and you told me how the chef made the meal, but I'll let, I'll let that go. Well, I think well he that, didn't. Well, no, 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 I want to come back at you. I want to come back at you because it was four MPs under the instruction of a chef who made the meals. We actually made the meals. He just coached us how to do it. He, he, you know, he, he, he trained us how to make the meals. We actually physically made the meals. So that's how you make a meal for 30p. OK. So, Lee, I'm going to go to John now. Right, so suddenly we're on a food programme. I thought that was <laughs> what we could manage to avoid. Anyway, um, no, I want to ask you this, Lee. If, do you think that divided parties, parties that argue amongst themselves, do you think they ever win elections? That's the first point. Now, before you answer that, let me just yeah. put this to you. The impression the Conservatives have given over recent years, do you think that's been uh, people arguing with each other or do you think they've been unified? I mean, first point, John, yes, uh, I, I keep hearing you saying that divided parties can't win elections. I mean, I'll, I'll take you back to John Major. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Tory party was fairly divided at that point, and they went on to, to win an election, so I don't buy that one. Look, nobody wants to see a divided party, obviously. It's better if you're united. And the second part of your question, look, we're a political party. There are, you know, the, the Conservative now is a broad church. It's never been as broad as it is now. I, I remember one of my first meetings with Boris uh, after, after becoming elected. And I sat in his office uh, in, um, in the House of Commons and the thing that struck me as we spoke around his table was the different accents. So got, you've got Geordie accents, you've got Derbyshire accents, you've got Scouse accents, you've got Nottinghamshire accents, you've got, you know, you've got you know, South Yorkshire, all, all these different accents. I thought, my goodness, this is amazing. This is, you know, actually you'd think you'd be sat around a, a, with a Labour Prime Minister, but we wasn't, it was with a Conservative Prime Minister and you've got accents from all over the country. And I could pick out, I could shut my eyes and listen to my colleagues and tell you which part of the country they were from by their accent. And, and, and the great thing was for me is knowing that those people, people in Durham, people in Derbyshire, people in, in Lancashire, were actually born and bred in those seats. And I, I thought that was pretty amazing. Uh, you don't see that in the other parties. Um, yes, sometimes in our own party we've got you know, MPs from different areas. That's not always a bad thing. But I think now the, the, the Conservative Party is actually more representative of the country than, than any party has been for donkey's years. So, you know, right. Lee, can I just pick that up, John? So, you know, you're right about a broad church. We've got Jacob Rees-Mogg and there's people like me and you. And do you know what, Lee? Jacob Rees-Mogg comes from an estate. You and I come from a estate. The only difference is ours was owned by the council. Jacob Rees-Mogg <laughs> owned his own. But you're right about the broad church. There is a huge broad church across the Conservative Party.
Right. Both of you seem to be arguing that the more divided you are or you appear, the better it is. No. And I tell you, that yeah, is a big... They said diverse, not I know, divided. I know, but, but a if you express yeah. your diversity, it will always be displayed in the media as an argument. You cannot then say, we all sit next to each other well, as Conservatives. I think it's more of an argument, John, if we just had one, if the party was just full of when people from minorities, backgrounds, or we, full we of Jacob Rees-Mogg. We may, Jacob Smogs, well, we well, may let be let 12 me, months let, away let, from let, the election. Let me come in, Nadine. Go on, Nate. No, 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 no. Let me come in, Nadine, because let me, let me speak from a position of strength here. From, uh, I, I've been in the Labour Party, and I've been in the Conservative Party, and I've been in arguments within the Labour Party and the Conservative Party. And when you argue in the Labour Party behind closed doors, <laughs> you end up never speaking to each other again. When you argue in the Conservative Party, you argue behind closed doors, then you go out for a pint at the end of the day. That's, That's the difference. It is true, actually. Well, we seem to Does have seen an awful see? lot of public argument among Conservative MPs in recent years. And to say we haven't and they kept it for themselves and it was all behind closed doors, well, I have to say, that's not how it seemed to are me. Are you talking about them turfing out prime ministers? Or I'm are you talking, talking about, about turfing out prime arguing struggle. about policy, arguing about Europe, arguing about all kinds of things. But the idea that they did all this behind closed doors and they were all lovely in public. I'm sorry, Nadine, you weren't. And Lee, I'm sorry, you weren't. Yeah, but we are humans and well, we are. Yeah, some of the well, issues listen, that you've no, just spoken about. Back. You know, we get our, our, our divisive issues in themselves and people do get incredibly passionate. Brexit, you know, and it all sure. started with Brexit, actually. It got much worse with Brexit. It did get worse, yeah. yeah. And it, but also yeah. it was very damaging to the Conservatives. That's the point I'm making. So, Lee, Lee, um, so I want to talk to you about small boats. We're running out of time. And your comments about, you know, being the band on the policies that we're putting forward now, just like the band on the Titanic. Do you think that small boats is going to lose us the next election? I'm sorry, I have to be quick, but do you think it's going to lose us the election? Um, if we get it right, uh, it, could be, it could be a game changer for us, Nadine. I think the new legislation that Rishi's promises, whereas if you enter this country illegally, you are removed immediately to a third country. If we do that, then that, that, should, that should be enough to please the voters in, in red wall areas like Ashfield. OK, Lee, Lee, I want you back again, Lee. It's been fantastic. And in the studio next time, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. See you soon.